Welcome back to another charger review. I have the Nightcore SC4 Superb in for testing and this was sent in via Gearbest for an independent review. So I'll go through all of the components and show you the charger in detail and come to some conclusions after some tests later on. If you are concerned about fake Nightcore chargers, there's a scratch off panel at the top and run it across some of the hot features as Nightcore calls them. You can see we have rapid charging up to three amps on a single slot. That's one of the features, a new LCD display as well. On the other side, we have the specifications. You'll note that there is a USB output port here up to 2.1 amps. That's not a power bank function, that just runs off of the mains in case you want to charge something with it plugged in. And the compatibility on the batteries, i.e. pretty much everything in terms of the common batteries out there. Nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium and the three types of lithium cells right the way up to the D cells. You can get a car adapter for this, it's an optional. Now on the back we have some of the features in detail so I'll show that to you there and you can pause it to go through it if you wish. There are quite a few features but it is a fairly straightforward charger in a lot of ways. I have the Euro plug version but it's a figure of eight power adapter so you'll be able to use any cable worldwide voltage with this and looking at the charger itself you'll be able to see that the size is fairly big actually particularly compared to the D4 and I'll be doing a side by side with these two so you can compare some of them. Two buttons under the LCD display that's just a label protecting the Nightcore lettering and you can see raised contact points two of them at the top and turning around the other side also have raised nipples on the contact points there that helps if you have flat top cells particularly some of the wraps can be a bit thicker the slot length is 72 millimeters on this charger so slightly longer than some of them out there you shouldn't have any problems with protected cells at all and i'm just loading it up now with the two six six fifties and i can get three flat tops in there and i have a slot spare so I'll be able to fit another battery, a slimmer one, a 18650 in there. That's pretty handy because a lot of chargers won't be able to accept that number of larger girth batteries. Look at the top, we have the input figure of 8, USB output and there's a 12 volt adapter input. You could also possibly use a solar panel, a larger one for that. Scanning around the outer casing, you can see there's quite a lot of ventilation slots on this and including on the underside as well which is probably needed. There's no fan on this model, but there are a lot of openings for slots to let the heat out. I'm just zoomed in to show you the spec. You'll notice you have four silicone pads under there. Now I'm just shining a torch just to show you some of the openings. You'll be able to see the internal components there. So that's why there's as much uh, ventilation as possible because particularly with this high output, you want good uh, heat dissipation for this charger so it doesn't heat the cells up. Now it is worth reading through the user manual even though it's quite a straightforward charger to operate because it gives you all of the settings and operations and I'll go through some of them um, in detail later on. You also have default charging speeds and those are uh, 2 amps for the larger lithium ion cells and um, you're down to half an amp uh, default charging for the nickel metal hydride nickel cadmium and this covers some overcharge protection USB charging and some basic safety precautions as well as your warranty details. Font is a bit small for my liking but it does get the job done. Now side by side with the Nightcore D4, very popular charger and I've used this myself for quite a while, you can see there is quite a significant size difference between the two chargers particularly in terms of the length, but also if you flip it over, it's taller as well. You notice that the design is a bit different. The buttons are on the side with the D4, they've moved them to the top. You've also got more ventilation slots as well. You don't have a USB output on the D4 charger. Now this will just list out some of the key differences between the two chargers. It's not all of them, but it's the main or the important ones. So you can have a look through and read those. There are quite some significant changes with the SC4 compared to the D4. If they are relevant to you, it will depend really on what you're doing. The only disadvantage is the D4 has a slightly lower charge speed, um, down to 150 milliamps. 
both chargers powered on. Just a quick look at the D4 on the display. One of the areas that was a bit weak on that, if you looked at it from behind or at a different angle, it could wash out. The display on the new night core is much better in that regard. You can see even at acute angles, you should be able to see the display very clearly. It's a nice display. It's a high resolution. Just has a bit more crispness to it than the D4, although the D4 did do the job fairly well. Another complaint with the D4 is you could at best fit two 2650 cells into it um, if they were flat top that is but sometimes like this particular cell here it's got quite a thick wrap on it and it can't quite contact it onto the points and so they've addressed those issues making the slots wider um, on the new charger compared to the d4 and also those raised contact points help with the thicker wrap another issue with the d4 not really an issue but it could be something of interest is the charging rate 750 milliamps for one or two slots yeah, not hugely fast but okay but that dropped down to 375 milliamps if you're using three or four and that could be an issue particularly with larger um, capacity cells the display does auto dim after three minutes there's no off function for that i'll insert a lithium ion cell now at 26650 you'll be able to see the charging speed up on the charging status it's around about two amps charging and that's the default charging rate for those the channel status cycles through the various readings you have the charging time the charging speed how many milliamps an hour it's charged into the cell gives you the milliohms reading as well as a good and bad status for that unfortunately you don't have the voltage display for each channel it will only give you the detailed ones once you cycle through the available channels now if you press the c button you'll be able to go in and cycle through the charging speeds. I've listed them out for you as well. Those go from 300 milliamps to 3000 or up to three amps in 100 milliamp increments. So you have quite a fine level of control over the charging speed. Whether or not you're gonna need that high charging speed depends on the type of batteries that you're using. But if you're a heavy user of the larger high capacity uh, 26650, lithium cells then you might find that quite a useful feature to have because those are the types of batteries that will take quite a heavy charge quite easily. You can also cycle through the three voltages for the lithium ion cells. It always defaults to the 4.2. The only battery you really have to watch with this is the lithium ion phosphate because the termination charge is 3.7 volts. It's lower than the other two. So that's the one that you really do need to adjust. Otherwise it could overcharge up to the 4.2 volts. Those batteries aren't particularly common, but that's uh, slightly more common than the other one. I haven't used any of the other type of batteries. By far the most common is the 4.2 volt cells. Now please put another cell into the slot. You can see it automatically switches over there. Um, you can see the uh, sort of hexagon that's open at two ends. So the two amp charging is pretty good if you're into vaping or you're using the unprotected cells. Those cells can take quite big charges all the way up to four amps on some of the LG ones. But personally, I would have gone for a slightly lower charge rate, either one amp or 1.5 amps. That's purely because I use protected cells quite a bit as well. So you might want to drop them down slightly on that. Inserting a nicomet hydride C-type cell, this will always start off the nicomet hydride cells at half an amp. And this type of cell is much larger in capacity and most chargers won't allow you to go above one amp charging for nicomet hydride. So you can go into the settings and manually change that if you want a quicker charge speed on those cells. And that's quite a nice feature to have if you use the C or D-type cells. For the normal AAs, I would charge them at half an amp, sometimes an amp if I needed a fast charge. You get again the same sort of readout with this. It does do the uh, internal resistance test, so it's looking for cells that are above 250 milliohms will show that they're bad, and below that it will show that they're good. So that's useful for both lithium and nickel metal hydride. And again, you can go in and change the charging speed on this from 300 to 2000 milliamp, again in 100 milliamp increments. So again, a fine degree of charging control if you need it. Now you can also mix and match as you would expect with an independent channel charger. So you can put any of the cells, you can mix them up with lithium 
or nickel metal hydro or nickel cadmium doesn't make any difference uh, just pay attention to the charging speeds that you can set them to what you want generally speaking I would say that the nickel metal hydrides you wouldn't be adjusting the charging speeds much I did test some smaller lithium ion cells I have some rechargeable CR123A batteries and I'm putting them in to the charger obviously this is a type of cell that you wouldn't want to charge at a very high uh, amperage and um, really ideally you'd be looking at about half an amp would be perfect for this and the charger seems to be using internal resistance to determine what it should charge the cell at smaller cells have a higher internal resistance than larger cells so these cells have higher internal resistance so it's dropping the charging down to around about half an amp which is pretty much spot on for this so you shouldn't have to do any adjustments with that testing the USB charging port that says up to 2 amps uh, 2.1 amps rather so I've just plugged a battery box in you can see I'm getting just over an amp out of that it will depend on the charge status of the battery that you're attaching to it now as soon as you put a battery into the charger that takes priority over the USB output I mean if it does finish charging then it will start to use the USB output I got just over uh, around about 2 amps max out of this so it's pretty much on target as far as I can see now there is a charge priority mode with this, it's similar to the new i4 where you can charge in priority the first two channels if you want and that means either one or two um, independently or both together. So if you're charging two of those channels at a fast rate, say 3 amps, then you could finish charging those first then it will start on the other cells. It could be useful, perhaps less so with a high rate charger that this is, but it's nice to have. I'm putting some uh, very high internal resistance cells in here. These are nickel metal hydrides and they're quite poor quality as in they've been used significantly over time. They're pretty much worn out. You can't do a discharge capacity test with this charger, but that internal resistance test is very useful. I'm just gonna put an any loop in now. And that's a good quality cell, not been used that much. And you'll be able to see the internal resistance is way, way lower. You should be looking around about under 100 for a good quality cell. There's also a lithium battery recovery mode. Press the two buttons together. I looked around, but I couldn't find one. Uh, zero voltage. And you have uh, reverse polarity protection too. You'll see the error come up and the bars flashing. So you can't really make any mistakes with this charger. Cycling through some of the settings again. Personally, the only thing that I would have changed is nice to have seen a voltage display over each of the channels. But apart from that, I'm pretty happy with the new display because at least it tells you more than the D4 did. At least you'll be able to see how much you've charged into the cell. I've done some temperature readings on this and the good news is it's significantly better than the new i4 which did have a bit of a heat problem. The front vent seems to have the highest temperature, it's up to around about 41 degrees but it's pulling that heat away from the contact points and the batteries. Now I'm on to testing the termination. This is the LG cell, I've got 4.17, Olight cell 4.17 again. So the display is slightly off. I find it's the same on the D4 that I have. It will read 4.2 and it will actually be 4.17 or 4.18. Not uncommon at all. Most of the makers do slightly go below the 4.2. That's partly down there for safety reasons. 4.16 on that particular cell. There is a bit of variation. We're looking for above 4.15 and I got above that with all of the cells that I tested. And this one came in 4.17, just under the 4.18. Another cell came in at 4.18, so there's nothing to complain about really as far as the uh, lithium ion charging. Uh, checking the temperature on the AA batteries, I put them on the screen for you, no problems with those. And the charging termination on the nickel metal hydride cells. We're looking for around about 1.45 up to 1.5, charged up the C cell here as well. 1.47 d4 tends to give slightly higher charge to those cells but i couldn't see any obvious problems with the charge quality on the charger it seems to be doing a decent job all round 
Wrapping up with a summary and conclusion on the SC4 charger. Overall Nightcore have done a good job on this one. I was a little disappointed with the new i4. This seems to have addressed most of the complaints that I had, particularly the heat problem, which was an issue with that model. There is a slight coil whine on my model. When you take all of the cells out, that's not uncommon on chargers, but something to tighten up on with the quality control. Also would have reduced the default charging for lithium ion cells down to around 1 or 1 1.5 amps which would work better for protected lithium ion batteries although it's not unsafe to charge them at 2 amps. So that's my summary overall. Let me know what you think or if you have any questions leave them below and be sure to check out some of my other charger reviews so you can compare the models and see which one might suit you best.